I have a fictional crush, then the people in my real life that I'm going to fall in love with, like, they're just never going to add up. Hey everybody, and welcome back to my channel, and hopefully this will be a lot better than everything else. I'm still trying to figure out the sound situation because hard surfaces make for really bad audio recordings. So, today we're going to be doing the mid-year freak out book tag because everyone's doing it and I'm late on the draw. So I believe there are 14 questions and yeah, we'll just start off. Number one, what is the best book that you've read so far this year? And that would be absolutely vicious. <laughs> Honestly, like I'm, I'm having a hard time because just recently I, I read Three Dark Crowns and I think that that is like way up there with that because I just I wasn't expecting it but I still think I'm gonna give it to Vicious by V.E. Schwab because I not only had high expectations for it it exceeded those expectations so I, I think I'll give it to, to Vicious. Uh, number two, what is the best sequel that you've read so far? I admittedly have not read that many sequels thus far but I think that the sequel that I enjoyed the most has been The Wicked King, which surprised me. If you didn't know, I did not really care for The Cruel Prince. I gave it three stars and I'm like, eh, it was okay. I like Holly Black, but this wasn't my favorite thing by her. Um, and then, like, The Wicked King kind of like threw me for a loop because I actually enjoyed myself and not because I just wanted to see Jude suffer more. I actually wanted to like, I was rooting for her. But number three, new release that you haven't read yet but want to. Oh my god, We Hunt the Flame. I, I, I have been looking forward to this book for like, what was it, like almost a year now? As soon as it came out, I'm like, oh my god, I need, I need to buy this. And of course I didn't because I'm doing other things and I'm trying not to buy until I need to read them. So we Hunt the Flame is something that's going to be on my TBR very soon and I'm going to read it by the end of the year. Number four, what is the most anticipated release for the second half of the year? I don't know. Uh, I'm going to say The Ninth House. Like, I feel like I have to own a book with the YA snake on it just because it was, it was such a huge thing this year. And apparently the people who have had the arcs, like, they were so excited for it. I, I like what Leigh Bardugo does outside of the, like, the first Grisha trilogy, so I think I'm gonna do that one. Number five, what is the biggest disappointment? I think my biggest disappointment this year was the Soft Hill Girls. I knew that it was kind of divisive, and now I understand why. But I also have to put in this other book that I read as an arc read of Salt for Air. And it, it really wasn't like, you know, I, I heard anything about it. Obviously, it was an arc read. The first chapter is brilliant. Oh my god, it was so amazing. And then I was just severely let down. Like, my expectations were like here. And then I went, like, it wasn't even just like a little bit of a drop. It was like here. I, I, I'm off screen. It was so low after that. Because it was an arc read and I, I saw other people's review of Salt for Air. Um... I apparently am in the minority, so if you want to go support a an indie author, um, go do that thing, but I personally was not a fan. Uh, number six, what was the biggest surprise? And uh, I, again, I have two for these. Um, Into the Drowning Deep, because I had no idea really what it was about. Um, I thought it was going to be like sea monsters and instead, it, it, and it, it totally was. But instead of just being, you know, random sea monsters, you know, at the edge of the world, it was more like sci-fi mermaids. And I was totally about this. And the, the second one, as I mentioned, was Three Dark Crowns because I had no idea what I was doing or expecting. But I was like, it's YA fantasy. Like, how good could it be? Apparently, it could be really good. And actually, I don't 100% know if Three Dark Crowns is YA. I sort of assumed that because the protagonists are like 15, 16 years old, but I think maybe this should be considered an adult or a new adult novel. I'm not, I'm not sure about that. Number seven, your favorite new author, debut or new to you? V.E. Schwab. <laughs> um, I've been following her on, on Twitter for a very long time, but I 
this year I finally just decided to pick up one of her books and favorite new author. I am I am so excited for uh, Addie LaRue, which is coming up. Like she, I mean, obviously it's not being released, but she's like, she's working on the draft and I'm so excited. I want it so bad. <laughs> Number eight, your newest fictional crush. And this is kind of hard because I don't have fictional crushes anymore. I did for a long time and then I realized if I have a fictional crush, then the people in my real life that I'm going to fall in love with, like, they're just never going to add up. So I stopped and I stopped, you know, pretending like this was an obtainable goal. Um, but I, I, I guess, I guess Victor from Vicious or, I mean, I know I read this last year, but Kaz? Trucker. You can see where I'm going. Like, I, I don't like the good guys necessarily. I, I like people with darkness and depth and some real tragedies in their background. Number nine, newest favorite character. Okay, so I, I had down Victor from, from Vicious, but I'm, I'm thinking, I think my newest favorite character is Katarina from Three Dark Crowns because okay spoiler if you don't if you haven't read it like skip over like 20 seconds or something like that i'll put a timestamp so you can skip over this one line because it was so good katarina is or katarine excuse me i didn't really care for her all that much but when she is pushed off the cliff and she climbs her way back out after like what is it like two weeks or something she says I want revenge and then I want my crown. I was like, I am on board. Y you, you deserve the crown. Like, I want all of them to survive and it's not gonna happen, I know, but oh my god, I want Kater I want Katarine to rule. And of course at the at the end again, like we find out that she's not actually the poisoner queen, or at least we think that she's not the poisoner queen. And I'm like, you have been ingesting poison for the last 10 years, 12 years, something like that. And you have suffered so much in order to make everyone happy. Like, oh my God, she deserves that crown. I, I can't even stress that enough. She deserves that crown. I don't know if she'll actually wear it, but that'll be... A thing for another time. All right, back on track. Um, number ten, book that made you cry. Um, so I don't cry a whole lot with books anymore. Like I'm heartbroken. I I feel I I will be like put in depression. But crying is actually really kind of hard for me with books. Um, I'm I, I'm total cry baby when it comes to like movies and TV and real life and things that I can visually see but reading for whatever reason doesn't but books that made me like sad or very very close to crying a thousand miles to freedom absolutely I was like I was choking up a bit during the end well during toward the middle and then I was okay and then at the end I'm like I can't do this anymore um, and then winter loon which I DNF'd but it's it is such a depressing book if i think that if i had continued with that and just decided to tear my heart out i would have torn my heart out and it would have been just crying and tears for days <laughs> uh number 11 a book that made you happy there are lots of books that have made me happy but i'm gonna give this to the gentleman's guide to vice and virtue because um, it just, it was, it made me feel good the entire way through. I, I wasn't, again, I, a lot of these, like, I just don't know what to expect. And so I try not to expect much from, from books that I, I haven't heard much about. Um, because I came into booktube quite late. But yeah, it was just, like, even, even, like, the bad parts when, you know, the characters screw up and the all is lost moment happens. Like, I felt good through it. So I, I think I'm gonna give this one to, to... I can't delay. Um, the most beautiful book you've bought or received so far this year. I didn't write something down for this, so... I have a book for this, like a physical book for this. What, what is wrong with me? I think for aesthetic purposes, um, we're gonna go with The Secret of Clouds, which is... I, I'm not a pink person, like, at all, but... This is just a beautiful book, generally, 
and it has a nice like um, I, I don't know what this is but it's like a the cover is like almost velvet or like a soft cover aesthetically there's that I think that if we're going to talk about um, pros or anything like that I don't know I let's go through my good reads several bad puns later wow apparently I've I, I don't feel like any of these qualify for like beautiful prose, but if I had to choose one. Two hours later. I'm gonna give this to actually a short story in A Thousand Beginnings and Endings. Um, I'll look it up later and put it right here, but it's the story with this girl, Olivia, who goes to a town in Arizona to cook up the Feast for the Ghost Festival. No, I don't like that either. I'm diving deep into the recesses. Editor Yumi, and uh, ignore everything that I just said. We're giving this to the short story because I just went on another like 20 minute rant about The Art of Asking by Amanda Palmer, and I think that you don't want to hear about that. So we're just gonna give it to the short story. Uh, number 13, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? <sighs> this is, this is a lot. <laughs> Um, I need to read The Opposite of Always, uh, Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, 1602, The Art of Asking, which I'm in the middle of doing, uh, We Hunt the Flame, Vengeful, uh, I Want to Read the Ninth House. I want to, I don't feel like I really need to read, but uh, I want to finish up The Song of Ice and Fire because I have two more to go. I finished two, I'm on book three, need to do that, should do that. There we go. And then number 14, your favorite book community member. And this question isn't fair because I have so many of them. I have narrowed it down to five for varying reasons and we'll get to that. Because it says book community member, I am not going to include my author tube friends because it just made it easier for me to choose people. So. Here we go. Uh, number one is The Wild Sasha because she is my closest booktube friend and she's so involved with everything and everyone. Like, I, I really enjoy her. If you aren't subscribed or don't know who she is, go check her out. She's wonderful. Um, she does a lot of vlogs and, um, vlogs and unboxings, but they're all bookish related content. Um, she's lovely, go. Number two is Rachel Murray Book Junkie because she has been uh, a source of support even though like we don't talk like or we're not like good friends or anything but just generally I will go to her cozy conversations or just her vlogs or anything for just a, lo a lot of support that she she gives. She's really good about you know discussing mental health and having very thoughtful conversations about what's happening with the booktube community or what's happening out in the wider world so I, I usually come to her if I feel the need for a little love and support. Her channel is, is growing like crazy so I'm sure that you guys are you either know about her or you're subscribed. If you're not subscribed go do the thing because she's amazing. I, I want to give her as much love and support as possible as well in turn. Uh, number three is Jaded Reader. This is for um, love and passion. I, I That's kind of a weird thing to wrap up all at once but she's always just so excited to share her books and to discuss them and insert me incoherently babbling for a few seconds uh, about Jaded Reader and the fact that she recommended the Tea Dragon Society to me and like I was in tears I should have put that as the book that made me cry but like I, I was actually fighting to not cry happy tears so yeah She's awesome. Yeah, but she's always super excited and passionate about manga. And again, she she has really thoughtful conversations about books and literature. Do the thing if you haven't already. Just number four is Read with Cindy. Um, and she her sass gives me life. She also has very thoughtful and insightful conversations. Um, she has a lot of similar takes on what I have with books, but she articulates it a lot better than I do. Also, again, her channel just like freaking blew up this year. If you haven't, go check her out, go subscribe, do the thing. She's awesome. And number five is uh, Katerina the Bookworm. 
and she just gets very excited <laughs> over books and I, I really I really do enjoy her. We don't really read the same things I don't think but like honestly I think she just like devours books and I am so impressed by just the amount of reading because like five books a month is kind of my standard slash hard for me if I can if I could reach that but she'll go through like at least three times that sometimes and I understand that some of them are graphic novels but even so she she gets so much reading done again go check her out she's really fun I think that's everything um that is all the questions so Thankfully, I didn't have to tag anyone because I still don't know enough people slash am comfortable enough to tag people, but yeah. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below if you haven't already for content that will be better than this. And yeah, I don't think I have any announcements or anything, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you in the next video. Alright, bye! She said it will never go away i know there is nothing left to say can we try to hold on just for now even if we don't know how to show them what we're all about oh, oh, oh.